Hello class. Today we're going to review all the <coughs> sentence combining patterns that we've been covering in class. Uh, the first one is combining items in a series using a conjunction and commas. Remember commas are needed to separate items if there are more than two. If you only have two items you don't need a comma to separate them. So let's look at number six together. Their television has been repaired. Their radio has been repaired. Their stereo has been repaired too. I see one item, television, radio, and stereo. I know I have three items, so I know I'm going to be using a comma. So the way I would combine this sentence is I would say their television, that's item number one, comma, their radio, comma, and their stereo. Now I need to make sure that my verb agrees with my subject. In this case, my subject is plural because I have one, two, three items. So I need to change has been, which is a singular verb, to a plural verb. Their television, radio, and stereo, they have been repaired. It's important that you make sure, again, that your subject and your verb agree. I would like all of you to do number seven for homework. I also want to add, after looking back at the slide, that I am sure a burning question a lot of you have is, do I need to say there each time? Remember we talked about parallel structure. So the answer is yes and no. If you choose to say there, you need to do it each time as I did, maintaining parallel structure. Or you may choose to leave out the second and the third there. That is also okay. So this sentence could read their television, comma, radio, comma, and stereo have been repaired. That's another way to write this sentence. An incorrect version would be if you said their television, comma, radio, comma, and their stereo have been repaired. If you only use two theirs, you're not maintaining the parallel structure of the sentence. So please be aware of that. Next we're going to re review the both and correlative conjunction construction in a sentence and the correlative conjunction not only but also. So we are going to use these when we have two items that we want to combine. So if we look at sentence number three, we can see the Renoir painting was being shown at a museum. A Monet painting was being shown too. I have two items, the Renoir painting and a Monet painting. So I can use this construction. The basic way to write this sentence would be just to use the conjunction and. I should spell this out, but for the sake of time, I'm going to abbreviate the Renoir painting and a Monet painting. Now I have to see that I have two subjects that makes it plural. I have to be careful about the verb and I'm going to conjugate it to a plural verb. The Renoir painting and a Monet painting were being shown at a museum. That's the basic way to combine these sentences. The next construction we're going to use are the correlative conjunctions both and. I'm running out of room here so I'm going to have to abbreviate even more. So my next sentence construction will say both the Renoir painting these are abbreviations, and a Monet painting. Again, subjects must agree with verb. We're being shown at a museum, and the rest of the sentence is going to look the same. Notice there are no commas being used. We're only combining two items. The third construction is using the correlative conjunction not only but also. So this will look very similar. Not only the Renoir painting, but also 
a Monet painting were being shown at a museum. Notice again, there is no comma here. Some of you see the but and you think, oh, we should always have comma conjunction. That is only in the case of a compound sentence. This is not a compound sentence. Rather, what we are combining are two subjects. Therefore, there is no need for a comma right there. Okay, for homework, I would like you to please, sorry about that, please do number, I'm trying to scroll this up, still getting used to this, please do number four. The next sentence construction we're going to look at is using the conjunction or. This is very similar to and. When we're combining two items using or, we don't need a comma. Three or more items, we do need a comma. Let's look at the example. Right here, Molly, my best friend, wants to become an actress. She may want to be a biologist. Molly, my best friend, this isn't a positive, which is why the commas are there. It's renaming who Molly Smith is. Molly Smith, my best friend, wants to become an actress or a biologist. Notice there is no comma before the conjunction here because we are not combining two sentences. Let's look at number one together. The young woman needs to purchase a jacket. She may need to purchase a long coat instead. So the thing that we're going to combine here is jacket and long coat. So I will write my sentence saying the young woman needs to purchase a jacket or, I don't need a comma, a long coat. I don't need to say instead. The or makes up for that, period. For homework, I would like you please to do number two. The next correlative conjunction pair that we learned about is the either or correlative conjunction. So let's look at this sentence right here. His manner of speaking can be very pleasant. Sorry, actually, let's look at this one. Bruce and Robin want to become physicians. They may wish instead to become medical assistants. So this is a great place to do an either or sentence. So what I'm going to do is start my sentence with the same subject, Bruce and Robin want to become, and I'm gonna put the either right before the thing we're joining. Either physicians, pardon the messy writing here, or medical assistants. So the thing we are combining in this sentence are these two nouns, physicians and medical assistants. Please do this one. Sorry, right here. His manner of speaking can be very pleasant. It can be, at times, extremely churlish. Along with the either-or combination, we also learn the neither-nor correlative conjunction. This is a situation where neither of the objects um, should be considered. So for number three, Clark broke his ankle. It may be the tibia in his leg that is broken. It's certainly either the ankle or the tibia. So this is an either-or situation, which we just did in the last slide. I'd like to try something different. Let's look at number four. The essay winner had not been announced. The science fair winner had not been announced either. This is a good neither nor situation. So what I'm gonna do is again, put the neither right before the thing I'm combining. Neither the essay winner, I need to get a stylus, 
nor the science fair winner. Notice there are no commas because I'm only combining two things here. Neither the essay winner nor the science fair winner had been announced. I'm not going to say not because that would create a double negative. Neither the essay winner nor the science fair winner had been announced. And of course, we're going to have ending punctuation to complete our sentence. I would like you to do a neither nor situation. So scanning down, that would be number seven. Please do this one for homework. Okay, we already talked about how conjunctions and correlative conjunctions can join subjects, direct objects, prepositional phrases, adjectives, verbs, etc. The last thing we're going to talk about is how a conjunction can join two sentences or two complete thoughts. As you can see here, a sentence is a complete thought. And when you use a comma conjunction to join the sentences, remember these sentences should be related. Otherwise, why would you put them together in the same sentence? The third thing you need to remember is put a comma before the conjunction. Here's an example for you. Jan went to a football game. Her sister went out to dinner. The two thoughts are complete. We see a subject verb. They express a complete thought. The two thoughts are related because we're saying what Jan and her sister each did that evening. So we're going to combine them using a comma before the conjunction. Now since they did two different things here, but would be a good candidate for a conjunction. Jan went to a football game, comma, note the comma here, but her sister went out to dinner. Let's look at number one. Megan purchased a camera. She did not buy any film. These two thoughts are related. We have a camera and a film, and I think but would be a good candidate for joining these two sentences. So I will rewrite it, combining the two ideas. Megan purchased a camera. Pardon the messy writing. Uh, I'm going to write camera on this line because I really want you to see the comma. Comma, but she did not buy any film. And of course, we're going to need our ending punctuation. I would like you to please do this one right here. Both cockatiels and cockatoos are colorful Australian birds. Cockatoos are predominantly white. Pick the best conjunction. Remember to put the comma before your conjunction and have ending punctuation and do this one for homework. That completes your assignment for tonight. And please have your uh, sentences ready for me on, let's see, Tuesday, October 6th or 7th, 8th or 9th. Or October 30th is when we will correct these and just review briefly so we can, um, you guys can be tested on these types of sentence constructions. Also bring any questions that you have with you on that day. Thank you and enjoy your weekend.